Geothermal energy has been used for thousands of years. We have almost infinite energy right below our feet pretty much everywhere in the world. If we can just figure out how to use it efficiently, it really solves our energy problems in ways that other renewable sources don't. Geothermal, at least lower temperature geothermal, has not been well, well explored and the potential has not been tapped yet. We can use this at lower temperature and use it directly. We don't have to convert it to electricity. Here at Cornell, we want to use that, that deep geothermal energy, that deep heat, to directly use it to, to heat our buildings. Cornell has very ambitious goals. Uh, we want to be carbon neutral by 2035. And we don't just want to buy offsets and use electricity because the electricity has emissions too. So we really want to demonstrate new ways uh, to use renewable energy that people haven't used before. We have our responsibility to what we're, what we're trying to do as our own goal as a campus, but we're also the land-grant institution in New York State. And I think that there is a real responsibility there to kind of show people that it can be done. Cornell's plan for geothermal heating is called the Earth Source Heat Project. Essentially, it is a plan to, to drill deep boreholes, deep wells, circulate water through them, get them up to temperature, and then bring that water back up to the surface where we can circulate it through heating systems to heat the buildings. This system is relatively easy to implement as long as you can find the right temperatures and the right permeability in the rocks to circulate sufficient amount of water. The big questions about the subsurface require us to use geophysics from the surface to try to figure out what are the rocks that are down there. Maybe look at logs and other details from, from other water wells or oil and gas wells in the region to try to predict what is down at depth. But in the end, to really know what's down there, we actually have to drill into it. We're at an exciting stage because we now have enough funds, thanks to the U.S. Department of Energy's grant, that we can move forward on drilling this exploratory well. And this will not only provide the sort of technical de-risking that we need at this stage to prove whether we can go on further and, and develop the real reservoir, but it also will provide a, a long-term monitoring well where we can continue to do science, but we also can sort of manage what's happening with the long-term behavior of the reservoir. The borehole itself is a window into the in situ conditions at one, two, three kilometers depth in ordinary continental crust, which researchers very rarely have access to. The whole idea is consistent with Cornell's vision of a living laboratory for campus. We can use this borehole to, to address the fundamental energy needs of Cornell and perhaps uh, globally uh, for energy demands. Because this isn't just a local problem here. This is a problem we share across America and in other countries as well. For decades, we've been doing energy conservation on campus, and it's, it's been fantastically successful, but a lot of hard work. Just all kinds of projects. We, we, we look at all the renewable resources in the area, and we, we try to figure out how we can use them. We're already cooling our buildings on campus by using the deep lake water that's cold and lake source cooling. And you might ask the question, why are we here in this barn? <laughs> And the idea would be to complement the geothermal system with using waste biomass that would be produced in part by Cornell's cows, as well as from food waste that's generated on campus, to convert that into a renewable fuel, such as gas, and use that as a way to do peak heating. So it would help us achieve this integrated system where we're putting all the renewables together. Cornell is not generally the place where people would think to, to do a geothermal project. We're not in a volcanically, tectonically active area. Instead, we here in Cornell are on old, cold, boring rocks. If we can successfully make the geothermal reservoir, this would be very good news for the numerous other parts of the continent where they also have just boring, ordinary rocks, but they need heat. We're hoping that having a demonstration here in Ithaca will set the stage for deploying it on a much larger level in the country. Cornell just feels like a place that, you know, is, it doesn't just talk about it, we're actually doing it. It's really exciting to work here. <laughs>